Welcome to the Sportscast, August 21st, 2018. If you haven't yet, please subscribe on YouTube, Periscope, and Facebook. And if you're on iTunes, please subscribe and leave us a rating and, and a review. It will help us out tremendously. It's been a long summer, and college football is the first football that will be coming up uh, next, uh, actually this week. And uh, and Ryan Krista, he's a hybrid sports guy, can talk about it. Ryan, welcome to the Sportscast. San Diego, it is good to hear you. Good to talk about uh, the American, the new American pastime, and that uh, football here. Exactly. How was your summer? It's been good. You know, just been enjoying being out. On the bow with my family, enjoying the sunshine, you know, doing a lot of different activities. But, you know, uh, the weather is going to start cooling down soon. The leaves will change colors up here in upstate New York, and that means football is around the corner. Before we go any further, what were your thoughts of the World Cup? Uh, it was an entertaining tournament. You know, that's, you know, every four years we get a bonus in the summertime. Uh, and get to enjoy the, you know, the world team. A uh, little disappointed, you know, the USA wasn't there, but it was fun to, you know, they got a chance, you know, the USA is in there. I may not pay attention to a lot of other games, but, you know, I had a more broader interest in this World Cup. Uh, you know, maybe picked up, a, you know, a new favorite team now. The U.S. can't make the World Cup again, so we'll see. <laughs> There you go, and the U.S. kickoff series begins in September against Brazil, so that should be exciting. Yeah, you know, hopefully, you know, they're really pushing these young players, you know, trying to, you know, redo their image, you know, of, uh, after last fall's disaster. Uh, but, you know, you got to regroup and we got to get qualified for uh, 2022 in Qatar. We got so much to talk about. Um, you know, like what happened this summer because you had a big I hate us uh, vacationing all over America. Thoughts on LeBron going <laughs> to the Lakers? Uh, disappointed, but not surprised. You know, I you know I was hoping he'd stay in Cleveland. It's, you know, it's exciting to see him. You know what he means to the area, uh, um, the you know the Northeast Ohio and. But, you know, he, he's entitled, you know, to do what he wants to do. He came back and did what he promised, and that's won the championship, you know. Uh, it's sad to see him leave, you know, because he is that whole franchise right now, that team, you know, like they did, you know, five, six years ago. They're going to probably hit rock bottom, you know. And But, uh, you know, they'll work their way up. You know, maybe they find their next uh, Kyrie Irving or LeBron James, you know, and this uh, Colin Sexton, you know. But, you know, I think, you know, you see, again, you know, one of the best players in the Eastern Conference go over to the Western Conference, and that just makes it that much more top-sided than the Western Conference. But, you know, you had Kawhi Leonard go to the Raptors. We'll see what happens there. But, you know, the door is really open right now for the Celtics and the 76ers, and I think that is going to be the ultimate rivalry here for the next couple of years. How would you rank the Lakers in the West? Did you put them um, like in the third seed, fourth seed, fifth seed? Where would you put them in the Western Conference table? I, you know, I, I think LeBron James is still right now the world's greatest basketball player. But I, I don't even know if you can make this. You know, that's how strong the Western Conference is. I think they'll be a seven, eight seed maybe. But you know, the West. You know, a lot of those teams are established. Um, there's a, you know, around LeBron James, there's a lot of, uh, young pieces, you know, who, you know, who aren't used to be playing important basketball games all year round. So, you know, do I think he can make them a challenging playoff spot? Yes. But, you know, there are no threats to, you know, you know, even get to the, you know, Western Conference Finals. I think, you know, this will be a success to make the playoffs this year. Who's better now, uh, Lakers or OKC? Oh, I think I think the Thunder are much better. You know, you got you know, I think, you know, Russell Westbrook and Paul George, you know, was an experience experiment last year. I think had its ups and downs, but you know, I'm a big proponent of Russell Westbrook, you know, what he can do is he might be the most underrated player in the NBA, you know. 
what the stats he puts up each and every night, the effort he gives, you know, he might be one of the most you know important players in the organization. You know, I think him and uh, Paul George will do better. I think losing Carmelo is an addition by subtraction, for sure. Kawhi Leonard to Toronto. Uh, was this a place where Kawhi, obviously Kawhi did not want to go to Toronto. He wanted to go to Los Angeles. And I'm glad that Spurs stayed firm, you know, to make that trade uh, to the opposite conference. But, wh- like, like, how do you see Kawhi Leonard's career going? Will he help out Toronto? <laughs> this is the most interesting drama, you know, drama that was me and Bay this year, you know. You know, it was just a weird situation, you know. The Spurs, for the longest time, have kind of been, you know, the Patriots of the NBA where they just, you know, they just never had any turmoil. Everything just kind of ran smoothly. It was, uh, you know, you have Belichick in New England, you have Popovich in San Antonio. They they do it their way. But for some reason, there was this major disagreement, you know, there was a loss of trust between the Spurs and Kawhi Leonard and, you know, went both ways and the Spurs tried to keep him, but, you know, it got to a point where they knew he wasn't going to sign with them. You know, he lost, they left a lot of money on the table, Santiago, not to sign with them this year, the extension, but, you know, they, I mean, the Toronto, you know, the Raptors, they got their guy in Kawhi Leonard, but I think the Spurs made out great getting, you know, a great player in DeMar DeRozan, you know, you're never going to get equal value in a trade. They trade is super, but they got pretty darn close to getting DeMar DeRozan. Now, how do you see the Spurs? It feels like the Spurs are kind of like, like, you know, have peaked already. Do you think they'll come back? Because it feels like Popovich is getting older, um, and they have some few players in their squad. Parker just left. Where do you see, like, the Spurs organization going? You know, they're kind of in transition, you know. This, you know, I think Demar Derozan, you know, will hold, you know, here for them for you know a couple of years, you know. But yeah, the, yeah, they're kind of, you know, I think Popovich is good for you know another. I don't think they'll hit rock bottom. They're too good of an organization, you know. I think they'll still. I think the you know Murray is a great point guard. Um, there's some pieces still there that they can work with. But, you know, are they going to be a championship contender or not? Then in the West, I think they're kind of in the same boat as the Lakers, you know, a playoff contender, but nowhere near a championship level team in the Western Conference. Yeah, which is one of those things you wonder. It's like, okay, these organizations had a, like a long dynasty, let's say 20 years, pretty much. That's what the Spurs and the Patriots share. You know, do these dynasties stop eventually? I mean, what will happen when Belichick leaves? Or when Brady leaves, or like one of the two leaves. I mean, I mean, like, like, like those big questions. Obviously, you look at the other organizations, like the Yankees. They've continued that legacy. Like everyone wants to play in the Yankees, though they're not winning much, but they still have that legacy. I mean, would you say the same for the Patriots? Once you know, like those two individuals leave, they'll still continue that legacy. Yeah, you know. I think, you know, it's interesting, you know, see how long Bill Belichick goes beyond Tom Brady, you know. You know, I don't foresee them, you know, I think every, you know, every great dynasty's got, you know, a time limit, you know, they're going to run out of steam. And I think once, you know, I have more, I think Tom Brady is the most important person to any franchise there ever has been in the NFL, you know. You know, the way he controls the game, you know, the how important he is, you know, Bellis, you know, they've just been a great combo, kind of like Duncan and Popovich or Duncan, you know, with Parker and Sinopoli. You know, I think Greg Popovich was still, is still a great NBA coach, and I think Bill Belichick's still a great NBA coach, but without the top players, you know, you can only do so much. This is, you know, a saying in coaching, you know, you can, you know, you can do as much as you want, X's and O's, but if you don't have the Jimmys and Joes, you can't go very far. So, <laughs> you know, one team that really didn't do well before or after these uh, this dynasty happened was the Bulls. Before the Bulls, I mean, before Michael Jordan came, nothing happened, and then after he left, nothing happened. I mean, <laughs> have you realized that? 
Yeah, you know, well, my, you know, you're talking about transcending players, and you talk about Tom Brady, LeBron James, Michael Jordan. They're not just great players; they're transcending. You know, those are you know once in generation type players. You know, uh, the players that can really carry a you know a whole organization on their back. Uh, you know, did Michael Jordan do it on his own? Absolutely not. Um, did Tom Brady do it by himself? No, but. They, you know, you can take those same pieces. You, you took Michael Jordan away. You know, they were not a great team. Uh, you know, not as good of a team. You know, you take Tom Brady away from the Patriots, and they might be a playoff team, but they're not a Super Bowl team. Yeah. By the way, uh, I just realized college football begins next week, not this week. Well, you know, we we. You got a kind of like a small appetizer. We call it week zero here. Um, <laughs> you don't have a team, you don't have marquee teams, but you know you, you know, for your football addicts like you know myself, you know they're going to be tuning into a little Colorado State, Hawaii. Uh, I think you got uh, UMass and Wyoming. You know, obviously not anything that's going to you know move the needle in ratings, but you know for people. For those uh, football junk users across the country, it kind of whets their appetite, you know, before next Thursday when it, you got the, you know, the mega college football weekend because there's still no NFL regular season. You got Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and then into Monday night. And uh, the AP Top 25 poll came out uh, yesterday. And I'll read you out, and we'll just discuss each one. Let's go from one through. No, let's go for yeah, number one, Alabama, number one, two, Clemson, three, Georgia, four, Wisconsin, five, Ohio State, six, Washington, seven, Oklahoma, eight, Miami, nine, Auburn, ten, Penn State. Are you surprised with the rankings? Any one team that sticks out? You know, I think they're all deserving for their. The pieces they bring back, you know, you, every year is its own different story. Um, I really, you know, I'm a really big, you know, Dabo Sweeney guy, and I really think this is a year again where Clemson, that they can get, you know, good quarterback play along with, you know, an improved offense line. You know, their defense is kind of, you know, might be a historically great defense, you know, we've seen in college football with the returners they got. Um, but, you know, so I really think this team is great. Alabama's Alabama. You know, they, they've they got some issues right now with injuries, you know, a little thin on the linebacking core. But, you know, and also the main, you know, the main story is, you know, who's going to be playing quarterbacks, you know, on September 1st against Louisville, you know. Oh, that's a given. I think it's going to be two at the door. Um, but, you know, you know, as, you know, another surprise team, you know, I think a very underrated team, finally kind of getting some preseason love is Wisconsin. They bring back every, you know, almost everybody from their offense. You know, Jonathan Taylor, you know, had a great freshman season. Warner Brooks, you know, a good quarterback. You know, they did, you know, have a little bit of turmoil here this week, losing their starting wide receiver to a suspension for domestic abuse. But, you know, a team that typically, you know, doesn't give out, get a lot of preseason love, Wisconsin, uh, got, you know, a pretty high ranking. But, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of the tension this year will start in the Big Ten's East. You know, you got four major uh, playoff contenders, you know, with Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State, and Ohio State. You know, not all of them are going to be contenders and they can end up knocking each other out they all beat each other this year but that's kind of the where my eyes really going to be watching this year yeah that and you know can Auburn you know keep up what they did last year and you know be uh Alabama in uh Alabama this year uh don't you think Ohio State was ranked a little too high after this whole coach incident that happened a couple weeks ago uh you, when you got a pro like this, you know, with five star players at every position, you know, they kind of run themselves a little bit. You know, they're going to beat the team. They're not going to get up. Very rarely did they get upset. 
Um, you know, like I said, it's going to come down to those, you know, three major games, I think, against, you know, Penn State, uh, Michigan, and Michigan State. You know, that's, you know, we don't know what's going to happen to Urban Meyer. We're taping this on a, you know, a Tuesday afternoon this time tomorrow. We might know that he's just suspended or he has been terminated, but everything. You got to come back right for that is, show. You know, you got to come back once we know the verdict. <laughs> I could come back, you know, give my thoughts on that. You know, you could go a whole podcast on people's thoughts about the last, you know, couple <laughs> weeks, which is, you know, this is my soapbox here right now, you know. In August, we, you know, you have a lot of anticipation of the season as you get closer to the, but, you know, that's kind of all been hampered, you know, with the stories out of um, Maryland and Ohio State because that's kind of been the focal point of the media which is kind of taking away of the excitement that we get when you, as uh, August rolls around, September is coming up when you talk about college football. But, you know, the important issues and, you know, they could have great impacts on uh, the future of two different programs. So what do you think about Urban Meyer? Do you think, um, you think, I mean, I can't say he's guilty because he's not in court right now, but uh, do you think he did the right thing a couple of years ago or, or you don't think he followed, like, you follow the proper procedures. What is your intake on that? <laughs> I don't, you know, that's the investigators are looking into a lot of the facts. What uh, you've heard? Yeah, from what I've heard, you know, I think we all can say that Zach Smith's kind of a horrible person, you know, weird, you know. And I guess is, you know, what people are really wondering, you know, Jeremiah didn't commit a crime, but why was this guy still here? this year why wasn't he fired <laughs> two years for, ago for so many issues you know what even beyond abuse you know these photos in the white house you know affairs with other people in the office you know oh, it just goes on that. and on you know <laughs> things you know it just you know and obviously he's got a job because of his you know grandfather was a legendary coach at ohio state but you know, what is, like, I don't care who your grandfather is or who you're related to, just the kind of stuff he's been linked to, you know, why was this guy still here, you know, whether, you know, the protocol, you know, a lot comes down, I think, to, you know, Urban Meyer and Gene Smith, the athletic director, you know, why did they keep this guy so long? Which, which you are a Florida guy. I know that you probably have a lot of, um, have a lot of stories, um, that, that yeah. you've heard about Urban Meyer in Florida, which I've heard. I saw some videos a couple of weeks ago that he's been tough on his players. One player, they they kind of you know they kind of you know made him practice while injured or something. Um, is he a tough coach? I mean, does he have? I mean, obviously he's a winner mentality. I know that you got to be tough, but what makes him different? You know, between him and uh, Nick Saban, is he a little bit more rougher on the players? Or no, I think you know I think he'd be more of a players coach over Nick Saban. Um, Nick Saban's got a men, you know, mentality of being extremely tough on his players. I think they're both well organized. They know what it takes to be a winner and are able to get great players. You know, we talked about that a few minutes ago. You know, you can only, especially in college football, you need not to have one or two great players. You need a whole team of great players. You know, you know, Alabama and Ohio State, or whenever Myers was in Florida, they were able just to get loads and loads of great players. You know. But what happened in Florida is, you know, you've got, you know, behind the scenes, you know, you had 36 arrests in four years, Santiago. You know, that kind of got lost in, you know, the Tim Tebow. <laughs> you know, you have this focal point of Tim Tebow, you know, and you think everything's going great. Uh, they're winning games, winning championships. But then behind the scenes, you know, you've got kind of chaos, you know, but he was kind of given a, a pass. But, you know, after Tim Peeble left, you know, the team started not to do as good. And there's then, you know, the rest were still happening. There's chaos on campus a little bit. So, you know, and then he kind of, for health, you know, he says for health reasons, he had to take a year off. And then after that, you know, right after that, he kind of, you know, Bell on Florida, you know, eventually went to Ohio State. So there's kind of a little, you know, I'm, I'm happy for the championships you won at Florida. I don't know if I really love the way that they won all the time, but 
Um, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of Gators fans out there who, you know, passionately dislike Urban Meyer for the way it kind of ended in Gainesville. Yeah, it was, um, I remember that, um, remember that year how he ended and, um, but anyways, uh, Florida it's actually. Very, very bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, you know, there's no place like Alabama, I guess. They, they never had these type of issues. <laughs> you know, you know, everybody has issues. You know, you know, every year it seems like, you know, there's one arrest that Alabama has that, you know, they don't get the, the large amount of arrests, but, you know, they do get arrested, you know, and it seems that that person gets a pass, you know. And then the media is hard on next given for a week, and then, you know, we forget about it, you know, and move on. You know, that's kind of a, yeah, the unfortunate world of college football and the money that's involved with it, you know, and the importance of winning, you know. That's, you know, there's a lot of paths given to coaches and players, you know, because, you know, presidents want to win because winning means more money for a university. Exactly. Florida is not ranked in the top 25. Are you surprised about that? No, no, but that, you know, it doesn't, you know, dis- diminish my excitement. You know, we got a, uh, a you know, a new coach in Dan Mullen, you know, this, you know, he's kind of changed the thing, way things are done, you know, kind of known of a, Dan Mullen is known as an overachiever, uh, great, you know, offensive mind, you know, kind of comes from that Urban Meyer, um, Tree there, you know, he was the offensive coordinator in Florida when they won those two uh, uh, national championships. Uh, you know, where, you know, we talk about Tim Tebow ever since Tim Tebow left campus, you know, we haven't had a successful quarterback on the center. We won some games, but it hasn't been pretty, you know, and uh, kind of, you know, you won some games, you know, banging your head against the wall. You know, we were won by defense first, you know, so I think, you know, Gators fans would almost rather lose a game 45-42 than win a game 13-9, you know, the way things have been going the last couple of years. So there's kind of this new uh, anticipation, you know. No one's expecting a championship this year, you know, but we you know, we want to see uh, improvements on the offensive side of the ball for sure. Uh, what the record will be, you know, you have some, t- you know, being in the SEC, you got a lot of tough games, you know. Eight and four, nine and three would be, you know, what I would expect the Gators to be, you know. But they could end up, you know, being a tough year and end up six and six. But, you know, there's marked improvements on the offensive side of the ball. I think, you know, people will be excited. Yeah. There's three teams in uh, from the SEC in the top ten. Not really surprised about that. Um, I've been hearing good things about Georgia. Um and and we'll see what happens in the Big Ten. Obviously, now it's wide open. That people are saying Wisconsin is going to take over. Uh, Washington is six. That's pretty interesting. Uh, they're in the Pac-10, right? I mean, in the uh, in the um, Pac-12, right? Yeah, Washington. Yeah, you know, the Pac-12 is interesting uh, conference. You know, they they got a lot of good teams. You know, with Washington, Washington, and Stanford being kind of teams that you know have the most uh, talent coming back, you know, quality talent. You know, USC is full of those talents that they got back, you know, but Ryan, you're still there. Hello. Ryan Krista. He is off the air. He hanged up. Let's see. Well, anyways, that is. Let's try to get him back on and give him a a second chance here. Sorry about that, guys. Sportscast has technical issues at times. Very. uh, Not too many of them, but it happens. See what happens. Hopefully. Ryan. You left us. I lost (laughs) Derek. Well, as you were saying, Pac-12 is an interesting uh, conference. Um, there, I think the last team that I saw them winning the championship was what USC. So it's been a while we have seen them. No, actually, Oregon yeah, went to know, the championship final one time, I think. But yeah, you know, Washington went to the playoffs a couple years ago. They got a lot of you know 
experienced talent coming back. They got a, a, a good quarterback in Jake Browning. Um, but like I said, you know, that US, you know, yeah, USC is another talent to but there's a lot of solid teams in the Pac-12, but, you know, when you're, you're talking about which conference might be left out of the playoffs, you know what? You know, I'm currently, you know, 50-50 between the Big 12 and, uh, uh, Pac-12, you know, which conference and one team from each conference makes the playoff. There you go. Should there be a six playoff team rather than a four? <laughs> you know, I, you know, when you, you start with 132 teams and you only got four playoff spots, that's tough. You know, there's going to be a lot of good teams that are going to be left out. And you're really only, you're, 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 you think the 132, you know, half those teams are from that group of five, which, they're pretty much eliminated from the start because this, you know, the uh, the playoff committee has really said, you know, they don't play a tough enough schedule on a week in week out basis to really be considered uh, for the playoffs. So, you know, you're really choosing four teams from the Power Five. But uh, I think I would like to see the group of five get one representative into the playoffs. You know, if they went to six teams or eight teams, but. Uh, with quality, uh, you know, the teams, you know, four seems to be good because you know you're going to get four solid teams into the uh, playoffs. But, you know, I'm kind of a group of five uh, apologists because, you know, I, I love football. You know, you'll find me watching, you know, Boise State, U- UCF, and you gotta you got to hop on the lane train this year, Santiago, and FAU. Yeah, well, oh, yes, right. Yeah, he's doing some big things at FIU, and uh, this is year two of him. So hopefully he'll, um, hopefully he'll do you know more big things. But um, I agree. You know, this was like what I was thinking. I was thinking, you know, to go into the playoffs. Let's say you know six spots. Let's say the top six conferences, right? Um, yeah. You have to win your conference championship game to get to the playoffs. Yeah, you know, well, there's five, yeah, there's five, com- you know, five power five conferences, and, you know, if you take the five power five with one of the group of five, that you get the six teams, you know, that's kind of gaining momentum. You know, another way I've been thinking, you know, I've heard a lot on sports, you know, college sports radio is, you know, having a separate four team playoff just for the group of five itself, you know, because it's, what you're seeing is more money gets poured into the group of five of these huge TV contracts. You know, the talent differentiates are starting to also grow between, you know, the group of five and the power five, you know. So you kind of, you know, you almost like to see them have their own championship, you know, because there's a lot of good teams, you know. And I think that would get a lot of eyeballs, you know, uh, if people, you know people who want to watch football are going to watch that because it's still good football. And it kind of gives them more of a better platform than, you know, all you're going to get right now is one bowl game against, you know, a Power 5 team, your best team. You know, like you did UCF last year against Auburn. They won the game, you know, and they're still fighting for attention. So, you know, I, that's just kind of my opinion that I've heard that I really like. I agree with one of our viewers. She says, I don't think it matters how many playoff teams there are, no matter what someone – um, goes, it's always gonna. Uh, um, there's gonna be team gonna be left out. That's pretty much. It, it, it might be a guy who said that. I can't remember. You know, San, San Diego. So there's 68 teams. 68 teams make the NCAA basketball tournament. Right. And the 16 team is mad they didn't make it. You know. <laughs> so no matter how many teams you put in the playoffs, there's gonna be a team that's gonna be upset they didn't make it. Look, either way, you know? you, you got to be undefeated. You got to win your conference championship. I think this whole Alabama and Ohio State, you know, going to the playoffs without winning their conference championship game, I question it a little bit. I think that um, has a lot of yeah, luck. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, no doubt that Alabama was a great team last year, but they didn't even win not only their conference but their own division. You know, uh, exactly. If you want to go to the championship, you, know, you got to win in Auburn. You no, know, but you know that. The playoff committee made a statement, and they said it from the very beginning last year that, or a couple years ago, that they're going to take the whole body of work. If championships don't necessarily, conference championships don't necessarily matter. But you know, you see, in Auburn's case, they didn't. They had to play an extra game, and that cost them being in the 
college football playoffs. So like, to me, it didn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, so, college football starts next week. We got a few games uh, that we'll be eyeing on. Obviously, the national game is Miami versus LSU playing at the AT and T Stadium where the Cowboys play. Another big game that I've noticed is Virginia Tech, Florida State. That's a big one. And um, Auburn, Washington, huge match because they're both in the top yeah. 10. So we got a few. Interesting fact to Santiago. Auburn has now played their third straight game in the Mercedes Benz Stadium. And if they come on a short end, they'll be 0 for 3 because they lost the SEC championship and the Chick fil A Beach Bowl at the Mercedes Benz Stadium. So they're going to try to break the. Break the curse. <laughs> What's your favorite stadium? Mercedes Benz or AT and T? Oh, the brand new stadium. Yeah, I, I haven't been to either one personally, but you know, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, I think talking about you know Jerry's World, this, this mega stadium, Metroplex. I think, you know, when I look at the TV, you know, I think it might be a little too big for my liking in the sense of how it seems. People seem to be very far away from the field when they watch the game, you know. Mercedes Benz is, you know, when you look at it from the outside, it looks like some weird spaceship, but, you know, it seems to be more of a intimate stadium there, so you're not as far away from the action. But, you know, I wouldn't mind to go watch a game at either one of those stadiums. One of the viewers says, what about Notre Dame? They always get uh, left out. <laughs> Notre Dame uh, is an interesting case, you know, they they kind of got their foot in the door in the ACC, so they play kind of a half ACC schedule. And then the rest of the games are usually pretty, you know. I just think, you know, when you look at college football schedules, you know, teams play, you know, eight or nine conference games, and they might play one good non-conference team, and the rest are, you know, three games are, you know, against a group of five or SCS teams. So, you know, you really got some cupcakes in there. You know, where Notre Dame is probably playing, you know, 11 out of their 12 games against really quality opponents, you know. So to get that week in and week out is really tough, you know. And as years go on, it's, it's all except for the recruits in Notre Dame, you know. you know. When I was a kid or growing, you know, even before that, you know, Notre Dame was the place to be, you know. But if you're an 18-year-old kid, you know, history may not recruit, uh, same way it used to, you know, uh, kids are going to want to go to, you know, the flashy universities, they want to go to the warm weather, you know, something in the end is a necessary paradise, Santiago, I don't think, but uh, it's hard for them to continuously put those great recruiting classes together like they uh, were in history, but, you know, I think Brian Kelly is one heck of a coach and, you know, gets the most out of their talent each and every year. I think they should just join a conference and call it Capiche. <laughs> no, it's you know, it's, you have to know. I think they should to join. If they're going to join a conference. It makes more sense to join the Big Ten, but that's <laughs> where they are geographically. But uh, yeah, there, there's a reason why they don't join a conference, and that's you know, kind of. Notre Dame stuck in this history thing of not ever joining a conference, you know. And they want to be their own game on NBC Sports every week. So they pretty much literally have their own sports network calling their games, you know. But in this age of, you know, television, you know, each year more and more games are either on TV or on the computer. You can pretty much find any college football game in America, some way or somehow you can watch that game if you want to watch it. You know, so it's not as exclusive as it was years ago where Notre Dame might have been the only game on TV. Well, there you go. That's our college football semi-preview. We'll probably have another one next week with Ryan so you can talk about you know, some predictions of the games um, and what leads up. Obviously, we'll find out what happened to Urban Meyer. Yeah. And, and I'd if, like to talk a little more. Uh, NFL with you next week too. I'll also give a little preview to that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, you know, we could talk a, bit, uh, a little bit right now. Adrian Peterson goes to the Saints. I mean, uh, to the uh, to, to, to the Redskins. Thoughts on that? <laughs> you know, it's kind of a you know with their 
Darius Tice, their rookie running back, goes down with an injury. You know, they're trying to find, you know, you know, you're trying to find a quick fix, you know, and you're going to give a guy who wins the best running backs in history a chance. I think most people think, you know, <laughs> obviously his better days are behind him. You know, even last year, you know, he got a lot of carries for the Cardinals while he's on the roster, you know, and he had some moments, but, you know, as time wore on throughout the year, you could tell, you know, age, age is uh, still undefeated, and I think it's uh, – <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be pretty quick. It's pretty quick at the time at the Redskins before they realize, you know, he's not the Adrian Peterson we saw, uh, you know, even five or six years ago. Not the MVP, uh, MVP uh, Adrian Peterson, probably one of the greatest running backs of all time, no doubt about it. Give a lot of respect to him, and uh, hopefully he'll uh, he'll uh, like uh, he'll he'll contribute to the Redskins because because they need a lot of help, don't they? Yeah, you know, they're you know, you know, they got rid of uh, Cousins, you know, they finally, you know, bought down his uh, contract demands, you know, and they brought in Alex Smith, you know, a veteran. They got a you know, good amount of talent still on that offense, you know, some talent on that defense. Uh, I, you know, beyond the Eagles in the NFC East, I don't think the Cowboys and Giants are the team's that they they were even a few years ago, and you know the Giants had a pretty bad team last year. I don't see them improving that much this year. So I think uh, they could definitely you know make a run at that division this year. Because I live in you know with now this injury to Nick Foles, you know, and I don't know if Carson Wentz will be healthy to be here. That division's wide open, and I think it could go to anybody. I wish the Dolphins got I uh, got uh, Nick Foles. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, they're going to ride or die with their fan Ryan Tannehill this year. Hopefully he comes back from that uh, knee injury last year. You know, like, uh, he lost his major target in Jarvis Landry, but, you know, they still got other people to throw the ball to. And, uh, yeah. And we see the NFC is, is wide open. The NFC is the AFC is very, pretty much been shut close for the last several years. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, Patriots, so you really kind of always playing for a wild card spot in the, you're in the NFC. And is the Browns the team of the future? <laughs> they're moving towards it. You know, I love what they've been doing in Santiago. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> is it this year? I don't know, but, you know. Maybe next year. Yeah, you know, I think, think, yeah, you know, like I, I think I told you, I think months ago, I think, you know, they went four or five days this year. And you're going to see, you know, enough for Hugh Jackson to keep his job. You know, I think Baker Mayfield can help get some consistency in this organization. But, him, you know, once they're out of the playoff race, let him play, let him learn, you know, get his feet wet a little bit, you know. And I think you're going to see this team, you know, go from four wins to eight wins to contending with the Steelers for that division. <laughs> <laughs> I because think here's, here's the way to look at it, Santiago. Ben Roethlisberger has only got probably two or three more years left the way he plays. I say one more season. I don't think he has two or three. So you, you're you're bringing if Baker Mayfield as good as he think he is as a minimum one pick, he's going to get better as the top team in that brand, in that division is going to take a going to take a step back from Ben Roethlisberger steps away. So that's kind of the way you, I look at it, you know. I'm not sold on Lamar Jackson in Baltimore, um, you know, and I, the Bengals are the Bengals, and, you know, they're going to play hard for Marvin Lewis. Uh, at the end of the day, they usually shoot themselves in the foot. Ryan Christa, we could have you on for the NFL preview show. <laughs> I, I look, forward to, look forward to talking a lot from <laughs> NFL with you. You know, I... College NFL is football, Santiago. <laughs> yeah, like the well, um, like the real NCAA. Like well, like we'll having another NCAA college football next week preview show. But then after that, we'll have the uh, complete uh, NFL preview show. It's going to be a good one. But time is running out. Ryan, thanks for coming on to the Sportscast. How can people reach you? Uh, you can hit me up on Facebook. Uh, you know, look me up, Brian Krista, or uh, 
Twitter at the Mad Dog Report 18. Ryan, thanks for coming on to the Sportscast. Thank you, San Diego. God bless. Love you, Mindy and Ryan. <laughs> Same here, bro. It was fun. Oh, wait. 